Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. We're on Chapter 2, Functions and Graphs, and we're up to 2.7, uh, Solving Modulus Problems. Now, I think have a look at this example yourself first, see if you can make some sense of it and work your way through it. Pause the video, and when you're ready, come back to me. Okay, we'll go through this together. So we're given a function, three times the modulus of x minus one take away two. We're asked to sketch the function. We're asked to state the range of the function, explain why it has no inverse, and then solve a particular equation. Sketching the graph of f of x, first of all. Now, if you have the textbook, they do use a different method for sketching the graph than I'm doing here. I'm not sure which method is better. Um, they use a method which really looks at transformations and combining transformations together, whereas uh, the method I'm choosing to use here is working from first principles. Now, graphs of modulus functions of straight lines tend to look similar in the same way that all quadratics look very similar to each other, all straight lines look very similar to each other. The first case is the type of function that we met earlier on in this chapter, where you have y equals the modulus of a function, and for the moment that function is just a straight line function. It'll look like that, something very, very similar to that. You have a line that comes down to the x-axis, touches the x-axis, and then heads back up. And anything of that form will look something like this. What we'll be looking at in this lesson is a slight variation of that, where the function could be multiplied by a value and a value could be added. Multiplying by a value doesn't really change its appearance very much at all, it just makes it steeper or less steep. However, this does. This constant that you add on means that the uh, graph can go beneath the x-axis now, or it could be further above the x-axis, up in midair, depending on the value of b. This point where the two lines meet is a very critical point. And if I was drawing this graph, the first thing I would do is find this point, because I know the one line's going to go up from it in that direction, and the other line's going to head up to the left from there. Well, how do we find it? This point is where the modulus is equal to zero. If it's greater than zero, you get the one half. If it's less than zero, you get the other half. If it's equal to zero, you get the point where the two halves meet. So we need to solve that. When does that equal zero? Well, it's when x equals one. One take away one is zero. That means the x coordinate of that point is one. Substitute one into the original function and you get zero. Take away two. So the value of the function or the value of y is minus two. The coordinates of that point then will be one minus two. Now we find the right half of the line. Well, the right half is when x is bigger than one. If x is bigger than one, the modulus doesn't do anything because it'll be a positive value. So you can just change the modulus into brackets and you get f of x equals three into x minus one minus two. Multiplying out the brackets in collecting terms gives us the equation of the right half of the function, which is just f of x equals three x minus five. Now that's a line that goes uphill. We could draw it now, but I think I'll find the crossing point on the x-axis first. That crossing point is where y equals zero or where the function equals zero. So you get zero equals three x minus five. Solving that gives us x equals five thirds. And those will be the coordinates of the crossing point on the x-axis, five thirds zero. Now I'll draw the line through those two points. That's the right half done. We then do the same for the left half. The left half is when x is less than one. Now if x is less than one, things get a little bit more complicated. The modulus becomes negative. That means when you do the modulus of x minus one, it changes the sign. Changing the sign is the same thing as multiplying by minus one. If you multiply something by minus one, its sign changes. So we need to multiply x minus one by minus one, and that gives us one minus x. Then we can use normal brackets. So three into one minus x minus two, multiply the brackets, collect up the terms, and we get f of x equals one minus three x. Now, again, we could sketch it straight away. We know it's going to go up here to the left. But again, I think I'll find the crossing point on the x-axis first. That's when y equals zero or f of x equals zero. So you get zero equals one minus three x. Solve that. 
and you get x equals a third. Well, that'll be the crossing point on the x-axis. Now I'll draw the line going up through that point. That's the whole function drawn. That's it finished. So that is f of x equals 3 times the modulus of x minus 1 minus 2. That is part 1 done. Part 2 asks us to state the range of the function. The moment you see the word range, you have to think y values. Domain, x values. Range, y values. So we want to know exactly what values of y this function can take. They can go up to any value. There's no limit. The lines just keep heading up forever. But they come down to this point, and that's the minimum point. They come down to minus 2, but no lower than that. That means the range of the function is that y can be any number, but it's got to be bigger than or equal to minus 2. That's the range. That's part 2. Part 3 is explaining why the function has no inverse. Well, that comes back to functions and inverse functions. A function has to be one-to-one -to, -one to have an inverse. Now, this function is not one-to-one. -one. Um, if you drew a horizontal line through it, it would cross the graph twice. That means this value here would give you an answer. This value here would give you the same answer. So, no, it doesn't have an inverse. It's because it's not one-to-one. -one. Probably the best way to write down the answer is the function has no inverse because it's a many-to-one function. Many values of x will lead to the same value of y, 2 anyway. Then the fourth question says, solve the equation f of x equals a half x plus 3. So when does our function, which we've just drawn, when does that equal a half x plus 3? Graphically, the way to solve this is to draw half x plus 3 and to see where it crosses our function. So... There's our function at half x plus 3. We need both of them drawn. That's both of them sketched. Without any points labeled, you'll notice. Um, this point here actually will be 3 on the y-axis, and this point here will be 1 on the uh, y-axis. These two points are the key points to find. Um, if ever you have to solve when one function equals another function, you're really just saying when do the lines or curves cross each other? Well, it's here and here. So that's when the one will equal the other. We'll have a look at A first. Before we do that, it's worth just reminding ourselves, this right half we said was 3x minus 5, and the left half is 1 minus 3x. So when we find A, we'll have to use this. When we find B, we'll have to use this. Looking at A first of all, um, this is just a reminder of what I just said. So when you're looking at the right half and x is bigger than 1, this modulus just becomes normal brackets, and you get 3x minus 5. And we want to know when that equals the new function, half x plus 3. We solve that normally. That gives us 5 over 2, x equals 8, and x equals 16 over 5. So that's the first point. We then do the same thing for b. Now b is where x is less than 1, so there's a mistake here, by the way. The modulus should be over there by the 1. But when x is less than 1, this does change sign, which is why the x minus 1 has to change to 1 minus x. You multiply it by minus 1. Multiply the brackets, collect up the terms. You get that. Solve that equation. You get that. And finally, x equals minus 4 sevenths. So we've now found the two points where those functions are the same as each other, a and b. Uh, the one solution was where x equals 16 over 5, and the other solution was where x equals minus 4 over 7. Now we're just going to add one part more to that question. So same question, same function. This time we'll solve an inequality. Uh, these questions are quite popular as well in the exam. So this time the question says, solve the inequality. When is the function bigger than or equal to 2? So when is it above 2 or equal to 2? There's the original function drawn again. Now we need to draw 2. Um, really, we should have a different letter here. G of x equals 2 would be better. Anyway, that's the line where you have y equals 2. We want to know when our function is bigger than 2. Well, it'll be bigger than 2 for that stretch on the far left and bigger than 2 for that stretch on the far right. Anywhere where our function, the red line, is above the new function, the green line. Once again, we need to find these two points, a and b. Same method as before. 
We need to solve the inequality. Um, to solve the inequality, we need to know when our function is equal to two. Well, first of all, when x is bigger than one, that's the equation we have, 3x minus 5, same as before. We want to know when it's equal to 2. That's when 3x equals 7. That's when x equals 7 thirds. For the other point on the left-hand side, b, that's when x is less than 1. And that's when the modulus flips because you multiply it by minus 1. So you get 1 minus 3x equals 2. Minus 3x is 1. x is minus a third. So those are the x values at the two crossing points x equals 7 thirds and x equals minus a third, and here they are. So a is where x is 7 thirds, b is where x equals minus a third. To solve the inequality, we just need to say, well, the red line's above the green line back here, where x is less than that, and the red line's above the green line on the far right, where x is bigger than that. So that would be the answer. x has to be less than or equal to minus a third for this part, X has to be bigger than or equal to 7 thirds for this part. That is the end of the lesson. Uh, if you have the textbook, go to Pure Mathematics 3, page 38, and exercise 2G. Thank you very much for listening. And.